I have been studying hard into some things to do with the eclipse of August, Revelation 12 sign of September, and 2012 TC4 asteroid of October. I might mess some of the words up because some of them are kind of hard to pronounce, but just bear with me if you can. I took most all of yesterday to research and study the days and meanings and put all this information together for all of you that are interested, so I hope you like it and can learn something from it. August 21st, 2017, Eclipse coincides with Rosh Chodesh Elul, which is the beginning of the sixth month of the Hebrew year. Elul begins at sundown on August 21st. Rosh Chodesh means first day of every month in the Hebrew calendar and is marked by the birth of a new moon. The new moon of August occurs August 21st. It is the first day of Elul. In the Jewish tradition, the month of Elul is a time of repentance and preparation for high holy days of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Elul is seen as a time to search one's heart and draw close to God in preparation for the coming day of judgment, Rosh Hashanah, and day of atonement, Yom Kippur. So sundown August 21st, same day as Eclipse, is the first day of Elul, which Elul is one of the most holiest months, with Elul Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah being the most holiest days of the Hebrew year. 33 days later is the great sign of Revelation 12. September 23rd, great sign of Revelation 12, just so happens to fall directly after Rosh Hashanah, the day of judgment. The Jewish new holiday that starts on September 20th and ends on the night of September 22nd and heralds the seventh month of the Jewish calendar, Tishri. And then falling on September 30th, the most holiest day of the year on the Hebrew calendar, Yom Kippur, also known as the Day of Atonement, falls exactly seven days, one week after the great sign of Revelation 12. Recap so far. So 33 days after the Great American Eclipse, which starts at the very beginning of Elul, is the Great Sign of Revelation 12, which starts at the beginning of the seventh month directly after Rosh Hashanah, Day of Judgment, and seven days after the Great Sign of Revelation 12 is the Most Holiest Day, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. About Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, exactly seven days after Revelation 12 sign, is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, considered the most important holiday in the Hebrew calendar. Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, most holiest day of the year, marks the culmination of the Ten Days of Awe, a period of introspection and repentance that follows Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. Revelation 12 sign falls right in during the two most holiest days of the Hebrew year. Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah are known as Judaism's High Holy Days. Now 13 days after the most holiest day, Yom Kippur, is the very close approach of asteroid 2012 TC4 that I was posting about a few months ago. Not saying it will hit, just that it needs to be watched, and also watch the debris that could be traveling with it. This asteroid that I will talk about in a minute is a very close one and comes a day after the Feast of Tabernacles. We will be coming out of the Feast of Tabernacles and coming on to the next day, Shemini Aseret, which is when this asteroid comes by. Asteroid 2012 TC4 is an Apollo near-Earth asteroid that will make a close approach to Earth on October 12, 2017. 
2012 TC4's minimum distance is about 4,246 miles from Earth. Our outer band satellites, called geostationary satellites, are around 22,300 miles above Earth, so this asteroid will be well below those satellites. Geostationary satellites are commonly used for communication purposes such as radio, television networks, backhaul, direct broadcast, some navigation, a number of weather satellites, and several classified military satellites such as PAN. It has a high rate of uncertainty labeled on it since they only had observation of it for seven days back in 2012 and won't be able to see it again until September. This is measured from the center of the Earth and not the outer crust, which I explain in a separate video. I will post a link to the explanation video below. Check it out. They say even though 2012 TC4 is listed on the sanitary risk table, there is no chance of an Earth impact before October 11, 2020. The asteroid is not expected to become bright enough to recover until early September. They also say the asteroid only had an observation arc of seven days between October 4, 2012 and October 11, 2012, so the exact distance of the 2017 closest approach is poorly constrained. On October 11th, we will be coming out of Sakat, the Feast of Tabernacles, that goes from the 4th to the 11th, and at midnight we go into Shemini Aseret. October 12th, Shemini Aseret is a Jewish holiday that directly follows the Jewish festival of Sakat, Feast of Tabernacles, which is celebrated for seven days, and thus Shemini Aseret is literally the eighth day. It is a separate yet connected holy day devoted to the spiritual aspects of the festival of Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. Part of its duality as a holy day is that it is simultaneously considered to be both connected to Sukkot and also a separate festival in its own right. Asteroid 2012 TC4 comes by directly after the Feast of Tabernacles and on Shemini Asteret. So let's recap one last time before moving on to the next part. The Great American Eclipse falls on the new moon of August, on the first day of the most holiest month of repentance, Elul. Thirty-three days later is the great sign of Revelation 12, which falls directly after Rosh Hashanah, the Day of Judgment. Exactly seven days after the great sign of Revelation 12 is the most holiest day, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, which is the ten days of awe, a period of introspection and repentance that follows Rosh Hashanah. Revelation 12 sign falls directly during Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And then Asteroid 2012, TC4, comes by directly after the Feast of Tabernacles and on Shemini Asteret. Revelation 12 And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, traveling in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Pause and take some time to study and read this next slide. red dragon and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born 
the red dragon is set up just where it is supposed to be according to the Bible verses. I did a video on the red dragon being in Virgo that you will all want to take a look at. I will post a link to that video below. Make sure to watch it. And here's a few clips from that video.